How's it going everybody? Uh, it's three o'clock on a, what day is today? Saturday? Oh my god, it's the weekend. Um, so uh, I'm just, uh, I'm tight in on, on this camera at the minute, I'll just twist it around for a minute. Um, I'm tight in on this, so uh, what I'm trying to do at the minute is I'm working on his ear. Um, there was a few things that were annoying me about his ear, and one of them was that um, it, the symmetry was slightly off. Drop the tools. Um, the symmetry was slightly off, and um, what was annoying me was I was measuring stuff on uh, the reference, uh, but it was tallying up. Uh, it was tallying up everywhere else. The, the main features on the face were tallying up, uh, but wasn't tallying up was his ears and what I felt. I measured them again, 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 and what it was was the the proportions of the ears were right. Um, but what was wrong uh, was that the ears were quite flat to the head um, and like I see uh, people when they're learning all the time that's a common thing that they do is do it it, go, uh, it goes flat against the head or one stick right out but um, generally the uh, people do it flat to the head so what I did was um, uh, now I'd already replaced this ear um, but I matched it off the other one I wasn't right so what I did was just slit the back of the ear and bent it out uh, slightly and um, I did the same with the other uh, other side and then uh, the measurements were right so what I'm trying to do at the minute is just work on the ear and um, the ears I love ears ears are fantastic um, ears are a bloody challenge though and they're very difficult to do um, uh, one thing that helps if you understand it uh, and uh, there's a dude in England uh, what's his name? I think his name is Andrew Sinclair. And if you look on, he does he does great um, uh, YouTube. Uh, well, I actually, I don't know if they're on YouTube, but definitely on his on his website. Um, and it's uh, this, I think it's the Sculpture School. I think it might be in Devon, but it's, def it's definitely in England. And um, very talented man. And but he he works with the Fibonacci sequence an awful lot. Um, that's the golden mean. Um, and he's created tools to help them figure things out very, very quickly. It's, they're like, um, like calipers, really. Um, and he finds that they work perfectly for uh, ears. Oh, this is moving. Um, perfectly for ears, uh, perfectly for hands. Uh, he uses it a lot. Uh, so you'd see, actually, if you wanted to know, uh, he does a really good uh, tutorial on how to sculpt it here. I just saw it yesterday on YouTube. Um, so if you look at ears and you understand the Fibonacci sequence, uh, Leonardo da Vinci uses it an awful lot. It uh, and it, the golden mean. Um, uh, um, it's the like a perfect ratio, and everything in on the planet, uh, nature-wise, is made out of uh, made up of this uh, Fibonacci sequence, and um, the ear is one of them. And a conch shell would be another one, a, a shell for, of a snail, lots of different types of uh, uh, fruits, flowers. Uh, the, the, the shape keeps recurring and recurring and recurring. And if something is off, like an ear, it might, it, it might look right, but you, you're looking at it and you feel, oh, that, that just doesn't look right, it just feels wrong. Uh, usually what's wrong is it, uh, it, it, it possibly looks right, but it's off with regard to the Fibonacci sequence. So I've been sort of trying to measure that off as well to that with doing this. And um, I'm getting to a stage that I'm happy, getting well, getting happy with it. Um, one w uh, thing I am noticing, uh, uh, like it's something that you, a lot of people are sculpting, your reference is either frontal or your reference is either a side. You might, if you're lucky, have, um, how's it going in? Uh, you might, if you're lucky, have a three quarters uh, over the top. Um, generally, we don't, uh, unless, unless you are actually, uh, you know, doing a one of a model that uh, you actually could take the reference uh, photographs off. Um, but unless you're doing that, you you know, you're you're subject to scrolling through uh, the internet, uh, like I did for this fella, and and loads of people, loads of my friends keep sending me um, images of Beckett. A lot of them are the same ones I have, but there's actually ones that um, I, I, I ne I've never had. Uh, this is, uh, for anybody who doesn't know what I'm doing, I'm doing a, a two to one 
twice uh, a hu twice human size um v version of Samuel Beckett and um one came to me there a couple of days ago um Stephanie I don't know if she's here she always uh, she's always sending me images of uh, Samuel Beckett it's gas the uh, started doing this when we first entered into quarantine and uh, loads of people have sent me all sorts of stuff uh, Beckett related um well, another one was that um I think there's an anniversary um, of a plaque that was um, put in uh, Dunleary and it's dedicated to Beckett. Uh, that, that there was uh, maybe yesterday or the day before. Um, so loads of people are sending me stuff that's Beckett related, which is fun. But uh, of all the references that I've seen, uh, he, he's quite a stoic, serious looking face. Um, but there was one that came in yesterday, it was lovely because he was actually laughing and it was beautiful. But, uh, so obviously with all these lines that he has in his face, we have them all um, in, in and around here, um, uh, up and around uh, our uh, bags of our eyes. Like, it looks like he had a permanent frown on his face all the time and he does. Um, but the, he obviously smiled at some stage and that photograph that I got yesterday was, it was gorgeous. So trying the working on the ear and what I was saying about reference there is I only have a front and I only have a side. I have a little bit of a three quarters. And uh, so what I'm trying to do is look at one and I'm, do, I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing um, because I can't get to a printer at the minute that will do it big enough. Um, I didn't think about this. I should have. I thought about most things, um, um, but I didn't think about this. I have a profile uh, and that's the profile I've used for the, uh, the actual profile of the, uh, the side of the face um, uh, but I don't have I what was that that's the left hand side that I have um, now I'm working on the right hand side I know for you it's probably um, uh, the left hand side it's weird when you look at that through a mirror it completely changes the sculpt completely changes people um, when you're used to seeing people like this even me looking at it now uh, I'm 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 used to seeing myself in a mirror, um. So uh, this looks normal to me. Whereas when I'm looking through a camera, which is the f uh, you get, you all know when you're doing a selfie, you can flip the camera around. Um, when we're looking uh, the other side, uh, uh, um, not the selfie side, um, it, that's not a mirror image. So uh, that's the image we're not we're not we're not used to. So you see a lot of people when they see themselves on on film, they go, oh my god, don't believe, can't believe I look like that. The reason why is they're not used to look, uh, used to looking at, um, at themselves like that. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing. Um, what, what I'm doing is I'm using the left-hand side reference profile to, and it's the profile, so it's looking that way. It's looking um, to uh, straight on to the left, uh, his right-hand side of his face. But the, the actual uh, reference is looking on his right-hand side of his face. So it's the opposite. So what I'm looking at is, I'm sculpting this ear, but I'm looking at an ear over there, but it's the opposite. It's the opposite ear, it's the opposite side. So what I have to do um, there is, uh, and it's something I don't like doing, is I have to sort of bring information into my head, flip it around, and then um, put it back out onto the sculpt. Uh, I wouldn't do that normally. I w I, actually, I would never do that, um, because it's far, it's far harder to do that than it is to actually um, excuse me, uh, it's far harder to do that uh, than it is to just bang it back into a computer, uh, mirror image it, or try and get the other side and um, and uh, pop it out uh, uh, on a, a, a printer. Now the printer I've used for this, uh, I don't know if anybody can see, well you can see Beckett in the background there, yeah, um, but Beckett is two to one, so the size of the printer I think was A0, um, so that's huge, absolutely massive. Um, uh, so I got a printer to print this out for me. So uh, unfortunately, I didn't. Um, I, I, I had them in uh, Photoshop sizing them, but I didn't print out. I, I didn't. I didn't do a mirror image of the profile that I have, which would have been very useful at this stage. But it's 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 pretty much done now. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm going between that reference. Excuse me. That reference there, flipping it around in my head. And then doing this ear. The ears are hard enough, lads. And uh, never mind trying to do it that way. Well, John Berry, God, my God, I haven't seen you in ages. 
Um, so I'm looking at it that way, flipping it around my head, sculpting it, and then I'm looking at the frontal profile. So uh, I have to twist this around, you're not going to be able to see it. And then I'm looking that way. Um, so you always should do that when you're doing a sculpt. And when I, when I do that and I'm looking at that sculpt, I'm going, oh, that ear actually should come out a, a little bit. I'm just seeing a bit there that actually should come out. Um, but if you're looking at this way all the time to the profile, um, to the side profile, you can't see that type of stuff. Um, so you have to flip and you, you'll be doing this type of thing an awful lot. And I'm seeing now that um, the ear that I'm looking up there needs to be pushed out here a bit. Now, that's, if, there's, if it's cracks, doesn't matter. I'll just repair it. Out a bit more, mad. There we go. And that was my problem um, when I was looking at the, I was looking I was up early this morning, so I was sculpting this morning, sculpting this ear. It's the only time really that I find that I can actually sculpt. Hey, Umesh, what's the story? Um, it's the only time that I find in the morning when there's nobody up, I can get a few hours of sculpting in, um, so it's not, uh, uh, it's not interrupted or anything like that. Which is nice. So that's what I was doing this morning: is ear, working on ear. Now that that is sort of looking right. Now you have to be careful, and um, when you're looking at some of these uh, profiles, with that twist, twist your head a little bit, which he has, and um, the ear will look like it's a little bit further out than it actually should be. So just be, I would be careful of that sort of stuff. Um, um, it's cracked on the back here because uh, I've actually re removed the ear. Um, this stuff is brilliant. The Shivant, that's what I'm using. Just stick it in, fill it. Perfect. John, I'm cool. I'm absolutely perfect doing this sort of stuff. Why wouldn't I be doing this stuff? Um, keeping me sane. I'm, I actually came straight in from doing the garden. Well, garden. I call it a garden. John, you'd know this come from out where uh, I'm living. Um, gardens out in Connemara are earned because you have to make them out of fecking holes and rock. Um, so that's that's literally what I'm doing at the minute, is doing that. So that's where I came from, straight in to do this. How are we lads? How's everybody? Umesh, how are you? Haven't seen, haven't seen you. Where are you at the minute, Umesh? Are you at home? I think I, think I thought I, I heard something, I saw something that you were at home. Umesh is from Tibet, lads. I did a master's uh, with um, Umesh. It's a fabulous painter. Keith, what's the story? Jessica, how are you? Claire, how's it going? So now, what I keep, I keep finding, and the more I work at this, the more I work at this, is uh, I'm finding that it needs to come out here, or this, this part of the ear here. And that's actually what I was working on before I went on and got distracted. Um, it needs to swoop in more and um, make this a little bit of more of a hollow. It's a bit too flat. So what I love is these tools. These tools are it's the same one as I usually always use, is this one. Um, it's the W21 Kemper uh, tool. And it, it's, it's just brilliant. It's just brilliant and it has a lovely end to it as well. And there's another one and it's rounded at the top and has a pointy end, which I love as well. This one here is the Big Daddy version, uh, that one there. And I have another one there, which is exactly the same as the W21 which is that one there, you can see the little head on it, that one there. Um, that there, we, um, I have this version of it as well, which is huge, which is brilliant for this size. What are we saying here? I'm all right, Keith, just banging away at this thing. Um, now, what's lovely about ears, if you can get them in, there's, there's little knobby bits on uh, on the ear that sort of little hard bits with sort of little bits like that there and that and that's what i've been working on as well as around here and trying to get this 
swooping around properly. It was a bit too flat. The whole layer was too flat. So it was, uh, and what I did was what I usually always see people are learning from the beginning. Um, I did exactly what they do, and uh, the ear was flat to the head. And um, so that's it. Took and it was throwing me off because I was looking at the head, and I've used I've used reference, um, but I've always uh, not just reference, uh, but um, uh, I've used measurements as well. And I keep measuring, 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 reference, 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 and I was going, it doesn't, it's not right. Um, whereas it was to the measurements was to the reference, but the one thing that was off was the ears. So once I. Again, I had to lob them, not lob it off, but I um, had to cut out the cut the back and pull it pull it out, so it wasn't just flat to the head anymore. And there's bits that I find that were difficult here to get on the head, but then when I got this working and um, and actually started walking around here, this fed into there. So you, sometimes I find when I'm sculpting. Uh, but one thing's not working, so I hop on to another thing, and it's, uh, that sort of feeds back into the bit that I was I had difficulty with, and you're sort of looking at it from a different perspective, and it doesn't seem to be doesn't seem to be as hard anymore. Thank you, ears. Ear, I love doing ears. Um, there's a, a massive one. Where's the massive one? I'm a t I don't know. You can see a massive one over there. Huge one. That there, I think that there is eight to ten times um, human size. Ears are fun. Ears are hard, but they're fun. I love the way they go in and there's a depth to them. Uh, what I was also doing, I've got a bit of time on this, which I haven't been for a wee while. I haven't been able to get time on it. So I've been able to sort of star in around here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can. Um, and start uh, like this eye. It's st st still a little bit off, but um, I started bringing all the detail into the bag, uh, bringing all the detail into um, <clears throat> getting the pores, getting the lines onto the top of the lip, getting the lip in. Um, like none of this. This is the first pass, really. Um, and then I was happy with that, and I just woke up this morning and I said, that e there's something wrong um, with the ears, and I said, right, get into it. So that's what I'm doing today. How are we, lads? I, I think we're, uh, today's gorgeous, um, but I think tomorrow is going to bring it. A bit of a bad spell, but then she'll be back again. A good weather, she'll be back again next week. So, what I've been worried about as well, at the um, apart from trying to do this fucking thing, is my bees. I, I have been waiting and waiting for weeks um, for stuff to come in, and um, this will be coming coming into the swarming season. Um, and what that means is that if they swarm, I lose half my bees, um, and I was needing equipment. And did it, the with the corona, there was no no way the stuff was coming in, and it literally arrived today unexpectedly. So that's where I'm going straight after this. It's going out to tend my bees. Lovely. Now I know I know that ears. Um, not uh, one ear, my left ear and my right ear are not the same, but generally the uh, the profile, uh, uh, and I have looked at them, uh, they're sort of similar. But now what I'm doing is I'm going into the little, uh, you know, the, I'm going into the areas that make them different, um, which is nice. Like there's a, a there's a bump on this side on this ear, this big crevice, craggy thing, this big knobby thing here. And there's actually it comes out further. Then I build the ear up in small parts of clay, or start with one big slab. What I did, what I did was, uh, no, it wasn't one big slab. And um, what? Uh, well, actually, it was part slab. The general shape, this bit here, I mimicked 
the air from the, the, um, uh, the, uh, the other side. I have a really good reference for it. So I got the general shape of this in one slab and then did added this bit on later and then added that bit on later. So it wasn't necessarily a slab. Um, but then what uh, what I've when I was looking at it, it, it did look flat. And the, the slab, doing it that way, can look flat. Well, it's a slab, so it is flat. Uh, when I say slab, I just mean a, a big lump of clay. Um, and I would gouge into that, give it depth. That's our niceness of that, doing that bit. Jane Lee, how are you? So, bit by bit. I know, I, well, there was a, a time there I did not think, well, I was getting nothing done on this. And um, I'm wrecking my head. As I said, what I found is get up early in the morning and have a little bit of time to myself to do this sort of stuff. And there's a line there. And there's another one there. There's this big craggy thing going on in here. And then there's lot, um, wrinkles coming off that line. I don't know if he has an earring, a, a, an earring or anything like that, but it looks like it does, it's not that he had one, but it, what it does look like, um, I seriously doubt Beckett had an earring, but the, um, what it does look like in here is, you know, when you have an earring and that's a that hole that's left um, from, uh, especially when you see somebody of an older generation to, to, and the ears have sagged a bit, the hole has been put under pressure, and that's what it, that's what it actually looks like. So I hope, um, I've seen a few skulls, we did sculpt the, uh, sculpt the skull workshop there, was it last weekend? I, th I can't remember now, Ginny Mac. Um, and I've seen a few people, uh, the few people have posted some, some of them are looking brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So if there's anybody out there that has uh, did the workshop, um, show, me the, uh, show me the skulls, Sorry, show me the sculpts. And um, if there's anybody out there that wants to do it, uh, it's all up on the website, paulmcdonalddesign.com, um, and it's all free. Um, just sign up and you get the reference, and just follow the video. It's all up there. How's it going, Caitlin? Caitlin, that's a lovely skull that you've done. Caitlin did the, um, the workshop with me and um, she made an absolutely gorgeous skull. Ears are one that you can get lost in because there's so many levels to it. Um, you just keep after, you have to keep going back to the reference. This looks like it, yeah, it does. This needs to come out a bit. That th this here was very flat, and actually it was out out about here. Um, I had I had to bring it back in, but this here, the the width from here to here now is narrow because I um uh this it was actually wrong. It's too far out. So now that I've narrowed and scooped it, and it's lovely now. Um, I've had to put the um the fat back on there and it looks like it's coming down straight whereas it doesn't it on and looking at that there's a nice curl around and it, it's actually quite close to this edge and you can see that in that reference and you can see that in that reference so uh, always trust the reference lads always and sometimes you will look at it and you're going um oh, it doesn't feel right um maybe it's not maybe it's wrong um go back to the reference um, but don't just go off on one. If you go off on one, it's going to be wrong. Might feel right for a wee while. Might feel nice for a wee while. Um, but um, that's not saying it's going to be right. I, more than likely, it's going to be wrong. 
and there's a, a lovely knobby bit here as well but it's actually quite close to here and I think that this is too far out so I'm going to put scoop it back These, these tools are brilliant, I love them. And they're not expensive, they're actually quite cheap. I think this one here was uh, $6. Unfortunately, you, ha you have to get them from, and well, not unfortunately, but um, there are uh, in America, they don't sell them here, campers, so you have to get them over. It takes a long time. And the last time I bought a load of them, I was charged a rake of second duty as well, so. They're, they end up being quite expensive, but they're brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Now for me to play. So, Caitlin, do you miss college? Oh, you're the, yeah, how, how's the stained glass window going? That's something that uh, I've always wanted to do, this uh, stained glass window. Um, uh, Caitlin's mom is teaching her stained glass. I'm right in saying that, am I? I'd always wanted to do that. And I think, I think I'm right in saying that. A friend of mine, they did uh, stained glass in Trinity. No, Trinity, no. NCAD, of course, not with Trinity. Um, and uh, they all did beautiful work. So, lads, if you're enjoying this, and uh, this, there's people who tune in every week. Um, I do this Wednesdays and Saturdays, I haven't done, I, and I don't know how many I've done at this stage. I've done a good few. Um, uh, since we went into lockdown, I've done them. Uh, whereas, if you're enjoying it, share it, like it, make a comment, and um, let me know what, what you're doing. Um, to keep well this is keeping me sane so what's keeping you sane and what I'm going to be doing as well I'll have to, I'll have to finish it I have to finish my skull first and then I'm going to do another workshop and um, so that will be molding it and showing you how to do the mold and showing you how to do, use the machines that I would use to make a proper mold getting air bubbles and all that sort of crack out So, uh, your mum was teaching you stained glass. So, what what does your mum do? Oh, if she, if she can do it, is that what she does? Yeah, I, 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 well, I'd say there's a few people that doesn't that don't uh, uh, don't miss college, but uh, I, I know a few people that do. That are, um, would rather be back in there. So this is a little bit awkward, lads, to do because I'm trying. To, you're, I'm trying to let you be able to see um, what I'm doing, um, but I also want to be able to see myself. Um, so, uh, and that that's actually a little bit hard to do. So, for the time that I'm doing this, I'm in a little bit of an awkward position because if I was in the right position. And a, good, and a good position for you would be, be over my a head. I wouldn't be able to control the stuff or see what people are saying or anything like that. So it's a little bit awkward to do this at the minute. Yeah, I would love to do stained glass. Is it a big kit? Um, that you uh, like? The, uh, I wonder. I wonder. Uh, would it be a big investment? Suppose it depends on what you're doing. I have um, I have a few things that I need to set up. I have a lathe, a wood lathe, that will do a 600 mil diameter bowl, 
and I have what else have I, oh I have a potter's wheel that um, is sitting down stairs uh, I have to I have to actually get off my ass and not, not just not busy enough but to build a workshop and get that stuff into the workshop I love pottery I love all types of sculpture pottery is fun it really is fun Sean Frisbee what's the story So going by, I don't know if anybody saw the news, I would have thought everybody saw it. Um, we're not out of the woods yet, so we, we, could, we could be st still stuck in our homes for a little while yet. Well, not that people are stuck, you know, we can still get out. But um, I'm just wondering, am I, am I actually going to be able to get back to college on, in September? Now the problem with doing Beckett is, well, no, it's not necessarily Beckett actually. Um, the problem doing the size of Beckett, he's huge. Um, you could appreciate that. Um, I think I need to do another line here. The the problem with Beckett at this size, as opposed to a normal size, he's taken way way longer than I, it would normally take me to do a uh, sculpt and that's okay because well, it's nice of something to do but um, it's a little, a little bit frustrating you're making silk masks cool uh, yeah I, like uh, and like they're encouraging us to um they've gone too far out, to um to wear masks so um, I haven't been. I actually ha haven't been really out that much, um, so I haven't had the need to be wearing them. So I'm gonna have to sort myself out. Now, if I'm wearing a mask, I'm gonna have to wear a cool one. So I'll have to get my sewing machine out and get some nice fabric. What tends to happen with ears as well is you get a line, you create a nice line, but the problem with ears is um, they go right in, and you on one well, you look at it one way and it looks lovely, and uh, like this way it looks lovely. Then you look at it this way and like ah oh, oh, crap, and then you look at this way and there's a big massive gaping hole in there, um, uh, or it's all craggy. Um, you have to keep an eye on them. Do I sew? Uh, of course I sew. When I... That needs to go good there actually. Um, when I, um, I set up a company with a couple of friends uh, years ago, years ago, um, and one of our first jobs was to make, I can't even remember the name of the things, um, but they were, you know, you know when you get, um, uh, do you remember Yop? I think it was Yop, uh, it was like a yogurt drink, but you know when they make car characters for these things, so what they wanted was, uh, I don't know if anybody knows him, um, he's, well, he's, he's, he's long, he's deceased now, um, and he was when I, we were doing this, but it was for the company called uh, Living Visuals, which was owned by, when he was alive, um, Tom McGinty. Tom McGinty, if anybody's into street performance, Tom, Tom McGinty was the first, he was a guru uh, of, of, of it. He, he, uh, um, 
he was the dude on Grafton Street, uh, Bowley heading him. And um, that you wouldn't miss him. Uh, outside Bewley's, I think, was his first one of the teacup. Um, so we were making costumes, and uh, we. Um, it, it was like we had no money, so we had to um, do everything ourselves. So, yeah, I could sew. I can weld as well. Uh, we were doing an opera, and that's a bit odd what's going on there. We were doing an opera for Wexford, and this thing was weird. Uh, but what it was was, and it it, it looked like an ops. It, it, there's this nineteen nineteen uh, sixties uh, sci-fi film, and it looks. Uh, uh, the spaceship, it looks like it's from that. I can't, I can't remember what the film is, but it was absolutely crap. Um, but it was, it sort of looked like that. But a mixture between that and turbos and a, uh, an Audi uh, seat. So we were making this seat that, were, was, that sort of looked like a spaceship. And um, it needed to be sculpted, but it needed to have a spine going up the centre of it so it would be strong enough. And then it needed to um, be able to rotate slowly. Uh, so we were explaining this to welders um, and they couldn't, they couldn't get us at all. Uh, they couldn't get into their head. We were thought we were fecking nuts. And uh, it was very difficult to explain because we're trying to figure this out as we go as well. And uh, so I said, ah, oh, feck it. Um, let's get a welder. So I can, um, that's how I learned how to sew and that's learned how to, uh, how I um, learned how to weld, just did it. Rockabilly 100, the dice man. Yeah, um, that's the man. Uh, like, like Jesus, he was a, a hero. <laughs> Paul McDonald, jack of all trades and master of them all. I don't think so. Um, I, I did a stupid thing one day. Oh my God. Uh, oh my God. I'll never forget this. Uh, actually, it was on that set. Um, and it was, like we had to make this really, really, really quickly. Uh, it was in a week. And no, it, I, of course, I have no photographs. Um, you have to take my word. Half my stuff, I don't have photographs. It, was, it had to be out the door, down and gone. But uh, I knew very little about welding. Uh, very, very little. Um, and I actually got into it. Uh, and I ended up welding. At one stage in RTE, uh, there's no exaggerating, I'd say 90% of the sets in RTE uh, I, uh, we made in the company, and if they were welded, I welded them. Um, but the uh, the first time doing this chair, this crazy chair, uh, I welded in my shorts. So I ended up with, uh, like if anybody knows anything about uh, welding, Jesus, um, do not weld in your shorts. Uh, I ended up getting arc eye, uh, as, it's like getting, it's like sun. It's like looking up in the sun and getting this real massive stingy eye on you. Um, Jesus. So, so get a good mask and don't bloody weld in shorts. She's still to learn that one. Wait, that was that was stupid doing that. But I didn't know any better. It was a nice day. I've made sets that are that big that had to be made in car parks as well. Yeah, in Mad Fecker, I know. Yeah, that was yeah, that was stupid. Yeah, and I've admitted that to the interweb. Like Jesus. Now that there still looks like he's the swoop. Yeah, it's the swoop around. Because it's beginning to, it, here. It's beginning to look too big. The reason why it's looking too big is because it, this has to swoop around, so therefore it taken, it take, it's taken, it's like the width of it here is too width and too wide, so I need to belly it out, and then it's giving me this lovely canal going in, inside of it. You think half the sets were still there in RTE? They probably were, um, um, like, and they probably are. Um, like, oh my God, which is we did so much in for RTE. It was ridiculous. 
It was oh, like it was. It, it was like we were we were nearly there every week at one stage, and um, like and we when Tobri tonight came on, that was one of the biggest sets we'd ever made. That was fucking huge. Um, and then to, that was Tobri tonight. Yeah. Then the late late after that when he moved over to that, and then um, the mass set started shoot um, parts of nearly all the programs on on the den. Um, oh Jesus, Fair City. Oh my God, like the holy crap, loads of stuff. And we were supposed to work with it uh, late, late this year, um, but unfortunately with Corona, that ain't gonna happen. Don't know what they're gonna, geez, I don't know what they're gonna do uh, with Corona for the toy show. Funny you failed to bring that little story up in class. What story? The one with the shorts? Sure, I can't tell you everything. Believe you me, there's more stories than that. Holy crap. Like the reason why I'm so paranoid uh, about, like with students, I would always be, not paranoid, but always be hammering it in about health and safety, about you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. The only reason I do that, because I have done nearly everything and done it wrong. And um, I have, well, I nearly lost my finger one day. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? See that the scar that's there? It's just about there, yeah. That's why you don't take the guard off an angle grinder. You lost that one day. Don't forget the more bags. No, that that more bags. That was that was like that was very young, Paul. Jesus Christ. There is a photograph. I think I posted it. I think I did. I think it's on Instagram. I think I did. Um, there's a photograph of me um, when I was on the Morbegs. And uh, you're talking. Oh my God. Um, oh, I, I don't know how long the Morbegs are. Anybody out there know? Um, the last time we saw the Morbegs. I'm just running out of power here. I'm just wondering why. Um, Give me a sec. Um, what's the more bags? Oh, 19. Just give me a sec. Instagram, give me a sec. Um, you're just running out of power. Um, what the hell was it? 19. 92? Maybe? Maybe? I don't know. Um, yeah, we did. Um, um, there was. We did the Morbegs. We did three hundred and sixty-four episodes of the Morbegs in three years, and that was not solid years either. We did them over the summer. That was metal. We went everywhere, absolutely flipping everywhere. And we had. Um, we had uh, when we went on location. We had a Winnebago, just a mass. Massive, um, what do you call it? A massive, what is it called? Caravan, glorified caravan. Now, no luxury lads, this thing went ancient, absolutely ancient. Um, and we went everywhere. Um, and that was great uh, year one, but year two, um, well, everybody knew who the flipping more bags were at that stage, and we needed to get uh, crowd control. And it was hard enough of a gig, especially for the uh, uh, all the more bags, uh, the performers were girls. And uh, sometimes the girls had um, a horrible time because we were on the, we'd be on location, we're doing a, a scene, and then you'd hear in the background uh, people shouting "Ali Rasa," and um, we had to get the guards in numerous times to um, have crowd control for the Morbex, which is hilarious. This is getting to it. 
a nice place, I think. I just need to. So when you move one thing, the problem when you move one thing is that it's relying or sitting on something else, or it gives it um, not necessarily. Well, one thing sitting on one thing, so therefore it's supporting it or uh, looks right. And then when you fix one bit, the other bit gets thrown off. So you're constantly sort of going back and forth a little bit sometimes. So And this ear is a little bit like that. I'm moving one thing, I'm looking for a reference, and then I hop back and I see oh, that doesn't look right. Um, and then it affects the other bit that I did. So it's a push and pull. Yes, I was on Rain of Fire. Um, the, we went, well, I went. I went in to Rain of Fire. Uh, like any, like, and like lads, it's as simple as this. And it's still as simple as this. Um, the, we got, oh, I don't know, some ridiculous amount of work on that thing. And we, uh, I went in. And it was the same with the Count of Monte Cristo. Exactly the same. I went in, and especially with my Mola accent, and uh, all the crew, well, the, all the crew were mostly English, but the, the production designer was a dude called Ro Wo uh, Wolf Kruger. And um, I don't think he could understand the word I was saying um, with this accent on me. And um, they, we, they wouldn't give us anything. So um, I, I, th I, I didn't think, I think they thought I couldn't do anything with this accent on me. Um, but eventually we got one job and then we got another job and another job and another job off it and it was, it was like ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous uh, the amount of work on that gig. Oh my god. They hit the, with the base tank, uh, the base tank, the base crack um, uh, or the, the base thing was making the HQ vehicle. It's the one with Ma Matthew McConaughey's vehicle, the one that uh, the, all the you know, the screens and stuff are in. So we, all that was great, man, and all that sort of stuff. When the boat tank sank, and the boat sank, oh, yeah. There was a lot of stories on Ruin of Fire. There's a lot of stories and a lot of venoms. This looks like it's a bit high, and I need to bring it back. And like we were at, on Rain Fire, we were, we've been asked to do all sorts of mad stuff, mad stuff. And like, can you make it look or a, a tank? A ta no, I mean a tank, a proper proper tank. Uh, can you make a tank look like it is melted by a dragon? And um, I'm going, uh, yeah. Um, so. We went away, we figured out, yeah, that'll do it. We'll do this, this, and this. We came into our more studio, went to, what was his name? Simon Wakefield. Simon Wakefield. Um, that, like, he's the dude that all gives all the work. Um, like, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be work, doing it on it at all. But Simon Wakefield, he, um, we did a sample of this melting stuff. Uh, like, pretty much melted melt, metal and all sorts of uh, stuff. We did test for him. And um, he loved it, um, and we said, right, what? How much of it is do you want to do? And he said, well, we want to m uh, pretty much melt the whole town square, and I'm going, a town square. So we we melted, we made, we melted tanks, we melted, we melted um, army cars, we melted, we melted uh, bodies, uh, uh, skeletons. Uh, we melted a train, a Dublin bus, uh, not a Dublin bus, a British bus. It was, it was in, it was in England. Um, it, we melted so much stuff. Well, we didn't actually melt it, but we made it look like we melted. Uh, it was ridiculous. Oh my god! And then half the stuff doesn't didn't even see camera, uh, or well, it did see camera, but it didn't see the. Uh, it got caught at the in the edit. And there was one thing we made, uh, it was, I don't know if you know what it is, it's a Klieg lamp. 
the clay lamp is, you know, when the Oscars, the old fashioned Oscars, the massive lights that would be outside. Um, it's, uh, we made one of them. And the idea was that when the dragon comes around and comes uh, over the where everybody camped, it looked like a sort of a what do you call it? It's a hodgepodge of a fort. And um, he's supposed to flick the Klieg Lang off with his tail. And um, he didn't in the end. And what they did was they just turfed it off the top and let it smack off the ground. And um, that's where it lived after that. So as this is getting pretty close to where I want it to be and um, as soon as I'm finished with this, as I said, I'm going out to my bees, get them too, and sort them out. The last thing I want is, because I, I still, I have, I have honey that is from last year and I do not want my bees to swarm on me and I have a delivery of stuff which I've been waiting for for quite some time. Sometimes the like these little pills are, are great, uh, but depending on what you're doing, sometimes the, that one there's a little bit small, so I make different sizes so that's a little bit bigger, um, and that can help smooth things out. I don't know if I'll be able to do that, those filling things again, anymore. It was a, it was a mad, mad time. They are mad. Great, but mad. I'm happy uh, making Beckett. Although I do have a hankering every now and again for making uh, films. That's, that's suppose, uh, and I suppose that's why I love doing stop motion. Um, because stop motion is, um, in its nature, it's slow. Um, so the pace, um, not that I, it, it uh, is always, but the, the pace with it is that little bit slower. And um, it's over a longer period of time. So you, you have to pace yourself. So it's not like it's this mental. And everybody does, anybody that's on here that knows or has done film, um, like sometimes you finish a gig and you really collapse for a couple of a month. Or stop motion isn't like that, which is nice. nice when you're doing this sort of stuff is your brain sort of switches off and goes nearly into meditative mode which is lovely now the back of this here I'm not going to show it to you because it's not done yet it's all it's what I was talking about it's all craggy now what I I know I do this and what I'm doing, what I always do is, I do the right hand side of the face, then I do the left hand side of the face, then I, uh, I equal it up, and then um, the, at the minute I'm back on the left hand side of the face. And now, uh, and the, I know that I'm like that. I know, uh, but I find it very difficult uh, to flip my head over uh, um, straight away. So it takes me a wee while to do that. Um, so, um, which, which is, you know, that's the way I do it. So it's cool. But now my I am uh, on this side, uh, working on it, and probably now to flip over to the right hand side will take me a couple of days to, uh, or a few hours to adjust. You'd like to give stop motion a go for a change? Yeah, I love stop motion. I love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, well, I, I suppose what I it's films. I, I love films. Yeah, but what I've what I always always loved was creating worlds and creating characters for those worlds 
and um, in stop motion um, it's not that you get to do maybe a part of it you get to do it all because um, you need to make the characters you need to make the world and and it's not like you can go on location um, I love it same with puppets well stop motion now that, that's what they are they are puppets what are you saying Aiden? Same here. When I get my workshop finished, I'm planning on starting to learn armatures. Well, then you need to get your uh, on to John Wright. John Wright. Um, John Wright makes all the our armature toolbox. You can go to them as well. But the people who uh, I like from Ardman, Ardman Studios, they use John Wright to who makes all the bone socket joints. And um, so, generally, it's the three mil one that you be going for. For that's for something that's roughly what two hundred and eighty mil high, three hundred. Uh, well, it's depend depending on what it's doing. Um, but um, you need to learn how to silver solder. And we could talk about that if you wanted to get some gear. That thing is just literally practice and practice and practice. It really is. Love making stop motion puppets. Ah, look at the thing. That's the problem when you switch off too much, is you end up dinging your skull. Ah. Let's smooth this off. And sometimes when you're sculpting, Oh, well, I find anyway. Um, I need to smooth it out so I can actually see it. Um, I know that sounds like it's a waste of time because, well, it's not a waste of time if it's right. Uh, but um, sometimes when you smooth it out, the whole surface, like the whole of this, is smoothed out. Um, the surface, if it's craggy, you're not really seeing what it looks like. So I smooth it out. Anyway, it's a nice process. And the loop tools are great for that because when you drag it across, there's one there. When you drag it across, it'll go uh, highlight, it'll get a, oh, sort of a, I know this is terracotta color, a highlight, and then you get a dark patch. Dark patch is a hollow. There's one here, and fill it. I was watching a film last night, lads, and I hadn't seen it in a while. Um, and oh my kid, everybody, actually everybody loved it. It was um, now you see me. It's a magic thing. Oh, there's another story. Uh, 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 no, well that's gonna. Ha I'll tell you that story next time because you nearly finished about magic. But uh, anybody who hasn't seen it, it's brilliant. Oh, it's a brilliant film. Um, oh, your girlfriend's an animator. Um, so we've talked about joining our skills and make a short uh, a short two. Brilliant. Yeah, just give me a shout and might be able to do something um, uh, or give you point you in the right direction of making uh, making stuff um, but uh, I think we are a minute and a half left and then I'm going out to my bees lads that this this is still not right but um, I just want to smooth this out so I can see what's going on So lads, as usual, um, I have very much appreciate you tuning in because it, if you didn't tune in, I'd be talking to the wall, and well, that'd be weird. Um, um, I was actually thinking, Aiden, uh, of setting. Oh, I have been thinking. Uh, I just need to do it, setting up a stop motion animation course because um, the only it's the only one that I know of is like in England. Um, that'd be so much fun. Jesus, that, that would be fun. But um, I want to sign off now, and I thank you all again. I'm very grateful for uh, for you tuning in and spending the time with me. As I said, it'd be a bit weird if I was just sitting here on my own, staring at the wall, sculpting. Well, not that I do that anyway, but 
if I was talking to the wall, that would be a, a different ball game. But um, I will sign off and I will talk to you next uh, Wednesday. Next Wednesday. We'll talk to you next Wednesday.